What's up guys, I'm Pierce from Snappy Data and I'm here to take you through our uh, Scala Spark Snappy uh, programming quick start. Um, so I'm here in the base directory and, or sorry, the base repo and I'm just going to go down here to quick start. Um, a little bit about what was installed and needed prior to this point. Um, on Mac OS X I installed Homebrew and I used Homebrew to install Java 8. Uh, Mac OS X comes with SSH and curl. Uh, both are needed to do the uh, snappy uh, getting started. Um, we also have this little bit here on setting up uh, passwordless SSH. That helps a lot uh, as, as you do these uh, scripts, so uh, make sure you do that. Um, okay, so no further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the snappy data servers here. Um, and just to get a sense of what is actually starting. So in this other file called getting started on our repo, uh, we talk a little bit about uh, the cluster architecture here, the locator, the lead node data servers. Um, and then beneath that, we talk a little bit about interacting with Snappy and uh, two of the key ways we extended Spark. So we really wanted to create an operational environment. Um, a highly concurrent environment where multiple clients could execute jobs at the same time. So we, the first thing we did was we made Spark executors uh, long running so they wouldn't go up and down with jobs. And uh, we also made the Spark driver run in a highly available configuration uh, so it wouldn't be a single point of failure. Both were, were very important for creating operational uh, highly concurrent environments. Um, so it looks like that is finished and so to start the Spark shell, uh, we do the classic thing, uh, but we also pass this configuration to the snappy uh, locator. Um, so let's do that. And this should look pretty familiar if you've ever used it before. Okay, so um, we note here that just like uh, Spark's basic programming intro, you can do the same stuff in here. Uh, you know, in that programming intro, you read in a readme file, you count it, you filter for the amount of time Spark, uh, you know, occurs. Um, so we just show that you can do that here. But more interestingly, uh, we want to talk about um, how we've extended Spark, the Snappy Data extension. So the first thing you got to do is bring in the Snappy context. That shit just gets past the Spark context, and then you have your little uh, Snappy object there. Um, this is kind of some basic stuff just to get started. Uh, we'll make a case class. Um, what we're going to end up doing here is creating a, a columnar table, a table that's optimized for OLAP querying. Um, so we just create some data there, parallelize uh, that data into an RDD. Um, and then using that uh, snappy context, we create a data frame based on that RDD. Uh, there we go. Um, oh, and so before we create this columnar table, we pass it this props value. And it, it, it takes a map um, of buckets to a number. And what that does is it specifies the number of partitions to create. Um, and, and thereby the number of concurrent tasks that can happen in parallel. Um, so that obviously can be modified. Okay, so I've already created uh, this column table once. Uh, so if I try and pass this again, it'll throw an exception. But all you would do here is just copy paste this line to create the table. Um, and as you can see, it just takes the name and the type and uh, the data frame schema and of course the props value we just created. So um, this is going to write the data from uh, that data frame we created into the column table using append mode. So let's go into paste, paste it. Oh, whoops, uh, I just need to actually create props one here. Uh, okay, paste. And there we go. Okay, um, 
And now we're just going to select everything from the column table um, and go ahead and print that stuff. Now, not too exciting, but uh, it's worth noting that at this point you could run all sorts of OLAP queries on that table. Um, so next, uh, we're going to show you row tables, uh, which uh, you know allow mutation, uh, which is not something you can classically do in Spark. So um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, specify another props uh, value. Um, this time we're not going to have any partitions. Uh, we're going to pass that to a row table. I hope I haven't created this one yet. And I have. Okay. The, uh, the row table is already in there, so this is what happens if you pass it again. You just get an exception saying it already exists. Um, and that's fine. Uh, so we're going to, going to write uh, the data from our original uh, seek up there into the row table in append mode. Uh, so let's paste. Um, there we go and select everything from the row table so we can just see it here boom and print it okay there's our row table um, and now what we're going to do is use that same snappy context to now update uh, that row table so just paste that and then do the same Let's go ahead and print it, select everything and print it. Okay, so what you can see here is uh, each column that had a 3 in it um, was changed to 99. And that actually happened. It went in and mutated that value. So that's not something you can classically do in Spark. So this, these are both pretty, pretty basic, but it gives you a sense of how you can work with this stuff in uh, the Spark shell. Um, to find out a little bit more about um, what the snappy context can do, so this is our uh, our API, our Scala API documentation. Uh, to get to this, um, you know, you can just go to our site and go to community and just click on Scala docs, and then here I just says, you know search snappy context. And there it is. And this gives you a sense of all the cool things you can do with the snappy context. Um, so just, you know, get familiar with that. Um, this little screencast doesn't highlight things like streaming and our approximate query processing. Uh, we have another screencast that covers that uh, relative to SQL. It's longer. Um, all of that stuff is covered in our getting started documentation. So if you want to go try that stuff out, just click here. And uh, you're right here with uh, getting started with the Spark API, and it'll explain how all that works. Um, so I hope this got you up to speed. Um, definitely check out our site and blog. Um, also worth noting that um, we have all these community channels. Uh, again, this is just our base repo uh, community support right here. This can also be found on our site. Uh, so very easy to come talk to us. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped, and uh, I hope you end up checking out uh, the getting started and all our approximate query processing stuff.